Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assembly. Today is the 23rd day of the month of Elul, the sixth month of the year 5782 on the set apart calendar as we discern the calendar, again as we discern the full moon as the new moon. So I know that's not lining up with most out there, but that's how we do it. And again, if you want to know why we keep the full moon as the new moon, we're not judging anybody else about how they might keep it. You've got to keep the holy days or the feast by faith just like everything else. So you've got to do it the way you're fully persuaded to do. But we suggest if you want to understand why we're on this calendar of watching New Moon according to Scripture on the Philadelphia Assemblies at YouTube.com. And we'd also recommend its companion, Keeping the Calendar According to Scripture. And that's according to the way we discern the scripture. Okay? Doesn't mean you're going to be in full agreement, but it doesn't matter. Again, you gotta keep it by faith, and that's what we're doing, keeping it by faith. Amen. As best we can read it in the scriptures. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and open in prayer before we get started. We're gonna be doing part five of this expository teaching on the book of First Maccabees, the Apocrypha. And we're gonna be beginning in chapter twelve. Okay? But we're going to turn and face Jerusalem, the place where the Father has chosen to place His name there, and we're going to open in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise You in all things. Father, we pray that You would continue to provide our day-by-day -day needs as You have. And Father, we thank You for doing that. Father, we want to hold up Special prayer for brother, uh, brothers, two Johns that we have in our prayers, JT or John Turner, and the other John, I can't pronounce his last name, from up around Chicago. Father, as they get ready, prepared to keep the feast according to faith, Father, we hope, pray that you give them understanding as we ask that you continue to give us understanding. Father, we ask that you would take away any obstacles that might be before them that are help are causing them to have troubles making decisions on any level, not just to do with when to keep the feast. Father, we ask that you teach us all not to rush in and you know, because we know that fools rush in where wise men dare to tread. Don't dare to tread. So Father, give those wisdom and all of those that are having problems making decisions. Father, help them to make their decisions according to Your Word, Father. According to what's written in Scripture and what the Ruach HaKadosh lays on their heart, that Holy Spirit of promise. Father, again, we ask that You would heal those that are sick. We ask that You would give peace that passes all understanding through Your Ruach or Your Spirit, Father, to those that have lost loved ones. We ask that You would continue to guide us and teach us. Father, I ask that You give me the words to say as I bring this message this morning. And I ask that you would open hearts and minds to receive it. And we ask it all in your precious Son, Yahusha's name. Amen. Amen. And also, we wanted, I also wanted to hold up Sister Brandy Beasley as she has been in a hospital. Father, we have been unable to under, discern yet whether she's still in there. But we ask that your healing be upon her as well, Father, and help her to recover. We ask it all in your precious Son, Yahusha, or Jesus' name. Amen been on my heart this morning, so I want to make sure I mentioned all those in prayer. The Johns know who they are. Okay? We're, we, we're in prayer for them. Uh, Brother John Turner's making a decision right now, or he's doing it. We're constantly keeping him in prayer to, to make that, that decision based on his communication to the Father through the Spirit. Uh, help him to do that. And the same with John from up around Chicago. We ask that you would take away any obstacles that might be forming before Him. As we know, there's always challenges before the feast days to try to keep us from keeping these set-apart assemblies. So, again, we're going to start our expository teaching in the first Maccabees. This will be part 5, and we're going to begin in chapter 12, and it's I'm going to go until about close to 11.30. I'm going to watch that, okay? So, part 5, chapter 12, verse 1. Now when Jonathan saw that the time was favorable for him, he chose men and sent them to Rome to confirm and renew the friendship with them. So 
Jonathan, we know who that is. That's brother of Yehuda or Judas Maccabus, okay, that's leading Israel at this time. I don't want to go into a big uh, recap of everything that was in part four. You need to go back and watch part four so that you'll be up to date on this. So if you didn't see part four, go back and watch it. But Jonathan, brother of Yehudas Maccabus, okay? So he was having this relationship, okay? Back and forth between two separate parties, okay? So, it, but at this time, he's trying to renew his, or confirm or renew his relationship with Rome, okay? He sent, he also sent letters to same effect to the Spartans, or the Greeks, okay? So it's talking about, remember this whole book's dated on when uh, Alexander the Great had taken over or unified all of Greece, okay? So he's between the two sanctions. He also sent letters to the same effect to the Spartans and to the other places. So they went to Rome and entered the Senate chamber and said, Jonathan, okay, the high priest, because he had been made high priest, and he is of the tribe of Judah, okay, or Yehuda, and the Jewish nation, or the, the Yehudim, okay, have sent us to renew the former relationship and the alliance with them. Now, I remember he sent letters to the Spartans or the Greeks and others too to the same effect. And the Romans gave them letters to the gave the letters to the people in every place, asking them to provide for the envoys, okay, or to make way their self safe conduct. In other words, make a way for Yehuda, okay, to the land of Yehuda. So if there there are people that were in these other lands, they want to make an envoy or, or make it a safe passage for them by protecting them by guard. That's what the envoy is, okay. Verse 5, this is a copy of the letter which Jonathan wrote to the Spartans. Jonathan, the high priest, the senate of the nation, the Kohenim, or the priests, and the rest of the Yehudim, or to the Jewish people, to their brethren, the Spartans, greetings. Already in time past, a letter was sent to Annas, the high priest from Arius, who was king among you. So he's naming one of the kings that was over Israel, or over their nations, the Spartans, stating that you are our brethren, as the appended copy shows. Onus, Onus, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, I'll get it right maybe in a minute, welcomed the envoy with honor, that would be the guard that was to escort, and received the letter which contained a clear declaration of alliance and friendship between Greece and Israel, okay, just like he did with Rome. Therefore for, this, or therefore, for this reason, you have no need of these things since we have as encouragement the set-apart books, okay, the holy books, which are in our lands, which he's talking about the covenants, okay, the commandments and the covenants. We have undertaken to send a, to renew our brotherhood and fellowship with you so that we may not become estranged from you or uh, become your enemy. For a for considerable time has passed since you sent your letter to us. Verse 11, We therefore remember you constantly on every occasion, both in our feasts and on our appropriate days. In other words, set apart days. What appropriate days is the day set apart by Scripture. At the sacrifices which we offer in our prayers, Okay, they mention them, that's what he says. As it is right and proper to remember brethren, and we rejoice in your honor or glory, but as for ourselves, many afflictions and many wars have surrounded us. The kings round about us have waged war against us, both Rome, Greece, and other nations, Egypt. We were unwilling to annoy you and your other allies and friends with these wars. For we have the help which comes from the heavens, or the Shamayim, for our aid, and we will deliver we were delivered from our enemies, and our enemies were humbled or brought low. We therefore have chosen Numinus, the the Ben or the son of Antiochus, and Antipater, 
the son of J Jason, or Jason, and have sent them to Rome to renew our friendship. So he's letting them know he sent a letter also to Rome. That's honorable. An alliance with them. We have commanded them to go also to you and greet you and deliver to you this letter from us concerning the renewal of our brotherhood. And now, please send us a reply to this. Let us know, are you going to honor this or not? This is a copy of the letter which they sent to Annas, Arius, king of the Spartans, to Annas, the high priest, or Coenum. Greetings. It has been found in writing concerning the Spartans and the Yehudim that they are brethren and are of the family of Abraham. And now that we have learned this, please write us concerning your welfare. That doesn't mean they're of the lineage of physical Israel, okay? I mean, or of Abraham in that manner, okay? It just means that they have an alliance or a brotherhood, okay? Please write concerning your affairs. We on our part write to you that your cattle and your property belong to us and ours belong to you. Communal property. We, therefore, command that our envoys report to you accordingly. In other words, those people that give them safe passage from one area to another. 24. Now, Jonathan heard that the commanders of Demetrius had returned with a large force, larger force than before, to wage war against him. So now he's heard from a messenger, you know, that somebody, that this Demetrius is getting ready to prepare a battle for him. So he marched away from Jerusalem and met them in the region of Hamath, for he gave them no opportunity to invade his own country. He sent spies into their camp, and they returned and reported to him that the enemy were being drawn up in the in, in formation to fall upon the Yehudim by night, so to ambush him in the dark. So when the sun set, Jonathan commanded his men to be alert and to keep their arms and hands so as to be ready all night for the battle. And he stationed outposts around the camp. When the enemy heard that Jonathan and his men were prepared for battle, they were afraid and were terrified at heart. So they kindled fires in their camp and withdrew. In other words, they started fires and then hid. They withdrew from the camp. But Jonathan and his men did not know it until morning for they saw the fires burning. So the trick worked, didn't it? Then Jonathan pursued them, but he did not overtake them, for they had crossed the, the, uh, the Elphorus River. And I know I pronounced that wrong. So Jonathan turned aside against or away from the Arabs who are called Zabadins, and he crushed them and plundered them. Then he broke camp and went to Damascus and marched through all that region. Verse 33, Simon also went forth and marched there throughout the country as far as Ascalon and the neighboring strongholds. He turned aside to Joppa and to it by surprise, for he had heard that they were ready to hand over the stronghold to the men who Demetrius had sent. And he stationed a garrison there to guard it. Verse 35. When Jonathan returned, he conveyed the elders of the people and planned with them to build strongholds in Yehuda, or in the nation, in the area of Judah, to build the walls of Jerusalem still higher, even higher, and to erect a high barrier between the citadel, which is talking about Jerusalem again, the high point and the city to separate it from the city, okay? A wall to separate it from the outside, actually, is what that's talking about. So they gathered together to build up the city, make it stronger. Part of the wall on the valley to the east had fallen, and he repaired the section called Chaffinitha. And Simon built Adia in Shef and Shephala. He fortified it and installed gates with bolts so that they would lock. Okay? Verse 39, Then Trypho attempted to become king of Asia and put on the crown 
and to rise to, and to raise his hand. I'm turning two pages here. Okay. And to raise his hand against Antiochus, the king. Okay, and that's talking about of Rome. He feared that Jonathan might not permit him to do so, but might make war on him. So he kept seeking to seize and to kill him, Jonathan. And he marched forth and came to Bethshan, and Jonathan went out to meet with him, and 40,000 picked or chosen fighting men. And he, and he came to Bethshan. Verse 42, When Trypho saw that he had come with a large army, he was afraid to raise his hand against Jonathan. Okay, I said, Jonathan, it says him here. Verse 43. So he received him with honor and commended him to all his friends, and he gave him gifts and commanded his friends and his troops to obey him as they would himself, or they would him himself. Okay? Then he said to Jonathan, Why have you wearied all these people when we are not at war? Verse 45. He said, Dismiss them now to their homes and choose yourself a few men to stay with you and come with me to Ptolemaeus. I will hand it over to you as well as the other strongholds and remain and the remaining troops and all the officials will turn around and go home for that is why I am here. Verse 46. Johanna trusted him and did as he said. He sent away the troops and they returned to the land of Yehuda Verse 47, he kept with himself 3,000 men. 2,000 of them he left in Galilee, while 1,000 accompanied him. But when Jonathan entered Tolomus, the men of Tolomus closed the gates and seized him. It was a bad choice trusting him, wasn't it? See, notice he's not going to the Most High in prayer on anything. He's just making decisions as he goes. And this is usually what happens when we listen to others and not to the voice of Yahuwah. And all who had entered with him, they killed with the sword. Verse 49, Then Trypho sent troops and cavalry unto Galilee, and the great plain, okay, the great plain, does not talk about the whole earth there either, it's talking about flat land or out in the area, to destroy all Jonathan's soldiers. But they realized that Jonathan had seized and had perished along with his men. And they encouraged one another and kept marching in, close, kept marching in close formation, tightly together, ready for battle. When their pursuers saw that they would fight for their lives, they turned back. So they all reached the land of Yehuda safely, and they mourned for Jonathan and his companions and were in great fear. And all Israel mourned deeply, and all the nations round, round about them tried to destroy them, for they said, they have no leader or helper. Okay, so they're not recognizing the Most High in this at all. They, don't, they think Jonathan's dead. Now therefore, let us make war on them and blot out the memory of them from among men. That's been attempted many times. But remember, Yahuwah promised there would always be a remnant of this people, so that's not going to happen. Okay, verse 13. Simon heard that Trypho had assembled a large army to invade the land of Yehuda and to destroy it. And he saw that the people were trembling and fearful. So he went up to Jerusalem and gathering, and gathering the people together, he encouraged them, saying to them, You yourselves know what great things I and my brothers and the house of my father, which is talking about again, the, the Maccabees, okay, the Maccabees, Maccabus, have done for the Torah and for the sanctuary. You know also the wars and the difficulties which we have seen. By reason of this, all my brothers have perished for the sake of Israel, and I alone am left. And now far be it from me to spare my life in any time of distress, for I am not better than my brothers. Verse 6. But I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and your wives and your sons for all the nations have gathered together out of hatred to destroy us. Verse 7, the spirit of the people was kindled. In other words, their anger was 
set up, when they heard these words, and they answered in a loud voice, You are our leader in place of Yehuda, and our Judas, Maccabus, and Jonathan, your brother. Fight our battles, and all that you say to us we will do. So he assembled all the warriors and hurried to complete the walls of Jerusalem, and he fortified it on every side. He sent Jonathan, the son of Absalom. Now it's not talking about the other Jonathan. This is son of Absalom to Yapa, and with him a considerable army. He drove out its occupants, occupants and remained there. He held it. Okay, verse twelve. Then Trypho departed from Tolomus with a large army to invade the land of Yehuda, and Jonathan was with him under guard. So see, they thought he was dead, but Jonathan wasn't dead. Okay. That was my point earlier. They killed everybody but him, all his companions. Okay, and Simon encamped in Adida, facing the plain. Okay, the, the place where they had been fighting that flat land. Verse 14. Trypho learned that Sim, Simon had risen up in place of Jonathan, his brother, and that he was about to join battle with him. So he sent envoys. In other words, protected messengers. Okay to him and said, It is for the money that Jonathan, your brother, owed the royal treasury in connection with the offenses he held, that he that we are detaining him. Verse 16, Send now a hundred talents of silver, in other words, asking for a ransom, okay, a hundred talents of silver and two of his men or sons as hostages, so that when released, he will not revolt against us and we will release him. Okay? Verse 17, Simon knew that they were speaking deceitfully to him, but he sent to greet, sent to get the money and the bin, his sons, okay? Make an exchange, it's a ransom. At least he aroused great hostility among the people who might say, because Simon did not send him the money, and the sons, his sons, and he had perished, Jonathan and his sons. Verse 19, so he sent the, the, his bin and the hundred talents, but Trypho broke his word and did not release Jonathan. That's typical when you send you know, a, a ransom that they won't keep their word. They'll usually kill the prisoners. That's usually what they do. Verse 20, and they, police officers know that today. That's why they don't want to do it. Okay? They don't want to give over because they kill them anyway. Okay? After this, Trypho, Trypho came to invade the country and destroy it. And he surrounded, or he circled around by the way of Ador. Okay, so he didn't surround them. He went around them to Ador. But now, verse 21, now the men in the citadel, again Jerusalem, kept sending envoys to Trypho, urging him to come to them by, the, by way of the wilderness to send them food. So Trypho got, Trypho got all his cavalry ready to go, but that night, that night, a very heavy snow fell. Okay, so it does. Obviously, they have cold weather over there, don't they? Very heavy snow fell. And he did not go because of the snow. He marched off and went into the land of Gilead. When he, in verse 23, when he approached Bascama, he killed Jonathan. So now, Jonathan is truly dead. And he was buried there. Then Trypho turned back and departed to his own land. Verse 25. And Simon sent and took the bones of Jonathan, his brother, and buried him in Modin. And that's where all the rest of his family was buried, if you heard the, other, the first four parts. The city of his fathers. Verse 26. All Israel mourned or bewailed him with great lamentations or crying and mourned for him for many days. And Simon built a monument over the tomb of his father. Like, they, like we tend to do today at Gray's, we build monuments. And we're really not ever commanded to do something like that, but that still be, is done. And Simon built a monument over the tomb of his father, just like a headstone. And his brothers, he made it high that it might be seen with polished stone at the front and back, just like a headstone. Okay. He also erected seven pyramids. Okay, and we know that's not biblical at all. 
opposite one another for his father and his mother and for four brothers. Verse 29, And for the pyramids he devised an elaborate setting erecting about them great columns, and upon the columns he put suits of armor for a permanent memorial. Kind of sounds like uh, some of the things we do with the statues and things we stand around the country as memorials. And there's nothing that we should ever do to honor the dead in that way, okay? According to Scripture. And besides the suits of armor, carved ships so that they could be seen by all who sail the sea. Usually the richer the person now, the bigger the monuments. Okay, same thing here. Verse 30, this is the tomb which he built in Modin. It remains to this day, to the day this book was written. Okay? Verse 31, Trypho dealt treacherously with the young king Antiochus. He killed him and became king in his place, putting on the crown of Asia. That's the whole area. Okay? It's like king of kings, like Nebuchadnezzar. And he brought great calamity upon the land, but Simon built up the strongholds of Yehuda and walled them all around with high towers and great walls and great and gates and bolts, again, to lock the gates. And he stored food in the strongholds. 34. Simon also chose men and sent them to Demetrius the king with a request to grant relief to the country. For all that Trypho did was to plunder. In other words, all he did was rob and steal. Okay? Verse 35. Demetrius the king sent him a favorable reply to these requests and wrote him a letter as follows. King Demetrius to Simon, the high priest of the Cohen, the high Cohen, Cohen, singular, and a friend of kings and to the elders and the nations of the Yehudim. Greetings. Verse 37. We have received the gold crown and the palm branch which you sent and we are ready to make a general peace with you and to write to, all, to our officers to grant you release from tribute or taxes. All the grants that we have made to you remain valid and let the strongholds that you have built be your possession. Verse 39, we pardon any errors and offenses committed to this day and cancel the crown tax which you owe and whatever other tax has been collected in Jerusalem shall be collected no longer. This has been promised several times over okay, and renewed. Verse 4, And if any of you are qualified to be enrolled in our bodyguard, or our army, let them be enrolled and let there be peace between us. In other words, you got men that are ready for to be enrolled in our army? Let them be enrolled. Verse 41, in the 170th year, the yoke of the nations, or the Gentiles, was removed from Israel. Okay? And the people began to write in their documents and contracts. In the first year of Simon, the great high priest, or Cohen, and the command and commander and leader of the Yehudim. Verse 43. In those days, Simon encamped against Gazer, Gazer and surrounded it with troops. He made a siege engine, in other words, a, a battle, an embattlement machine, okay? Could have been a catapult, could have been a lot of different things, but that's what it's talking a siege machine. Brought it up to the city and battered and, kept and captured one tower. So it makes sense, it could have been a battering ram, catapult, something of that nature. 44, the men in the siege engine leaped out into the city and a great tumult arose or riot arose in the city. Verse 45, the men in the city with their wives and their children went up on went up on the wall with their clothes torn and they cried out with a loud voice asking Simon to make peace with them. They said, do not treat us according to our wicked acts but according to your mercy. Verse 47, let's see what Simon does. So Simon reached an agreement with them and stopped fighting against them. According to the commandment of Yahuwah, we're supposed to live peaceably with all men if it, wherever it's possible. And he's going back to that. But he expelled them from the city and cleansed the houses in which the idols were, okay, where they had their, their uh, Elohim or their gods. And then entered it with, entered it with hymns 
and praise to Yahuwah. I added to Yahuwah. Verse 48. He cast it out. He cast out. Uh, he cast out of it all uncleanliness. Okay, and settled in it men who observed the Torah. He also strengthened his fortifications and built it, built in it a house for himself. So he was going to remain there. And live there. <laughs> Forty-nine. The men in the citadel at Jerusalem. Okay, the, the high point in Jerusalem were prevented from going out to the country and back to buy and sell. So they were very hungry and many of them perished from famine. So they starved to death. Verse 50, Then they cried to Simon to make peace with them, and he did so. But he expelled them from there and cleansed the citadel from its pollutions. Verse 51, On the 23rd day of the second month, Okay, and that's talking about on the Hebrew calendar. In the one, but this is the, the year is not. In the 170th year since Greece had been consolidated by Alexander the Great, the Yehudim entered it with praise and palm branches and with harps and cymbals and stringed instruments and with hymns and songs because a great enemy had been crushed and removed from Israel. 52. And Simon decreed that every year they should celebrate this day with rejoicing. So he's setting up another holiday. Okay? I'll just say it like that. He strengthened the fortifications of the temple high all alongside the citadel. And he and his men dwelt there. And Simon saw that Johan, his son, or his Ben, had reached manhood, so he made him commander of all the forces and he dwelled in Gazra. For chapter 14. Okay? In one in, in the 170th 72nd year, and again we're dating back to when Alexander the Great took over Greece. This sets this whole time period for this book. That's why they keep going back to that. Okay? They're, they're obviously not going by anything else, and that's probably pretty close to the same time that Israel was really cut off as a nation. That's why the date. Demetrius, the king, assembled his forces and marched into Meda to secure help so that he could make war against Trypho. Verse 2, when Arsaces, the king of Persia, and Meda heard that Demetrius had invaded his territory, he sent one of his commanders to take him alive. And he went and defeated the army of Demetrius and seized him and took him to Arsaces, who put him under guard. Verse 4, the land had rest all the days of Simon. So it says they didn't have any more war from, since Simon had took over and did what we just read, overtook and refortified Jerusalem and the citadel and all that now he this it said he the land had rest or had peace all the days of simon after that he sought the good of his nation simon did his rule was pleasing to them the people of israel as was the honor shown him all his days verse 5 to crown all his honors he took yapa for a harbor and opened a, a way to the isle or the coast of the sea. Okay, verse 6. He extended the borders of his nation and gained full control of the country, Israel. He gathered a host of captives. He ruled over Gazara and Beth Zur and the citadel, again, which is Jerusalem, and he removed its unclean, the uncleanliness from it. And there was none to oppose him. Verse 8. They tilled their land in peace. The ground gave its increase, and the trees of the plains their fruit. Old men sat in the streets. They all talked together of good things, and the youth donned the glories. In other words, the youth inherited the glories and garments of war. Verse 10, he supplied the cities with food and furnished them with the means of defense till his renown or his fame spread to the ends of the earth. Verse 11, He established peace in the land, and Israel rejoiced with great joy. 
Each man sat under his vine and his fig tree. They were able to plant and reap and do all those and, get, and grow old. And there was none to make them afraid. They had no reason to fear. Verse 13, no one was left in the, in the land to fight them. And the kings were crushed in those days. Verse 14, he strengthened all the humble of his people. He, saw, he sought out the Torah and did away with every lawless and wicked man. Okay? Verse 15, he made the sanctuary glorious and added to the vessels of the sanctuary. Created more vet, new vessels for the sanctuary. 16, it was heard in Rome and as far away as Sparta that Jonathan had died and they were deeply grieved. Verse 17, when they heard that Simon his brother had become high priest or high coin in his place and that he was ruler ruling over the country and the cities in it, they wrote to him on bronze tablets to renew with him the friendship and alliance which, he, which they had established with Yehuda and Jonathan, his brothers. Verse 19, and these were read before, before the assembly in Jerusalem. Verse 20, the congregation is the assembly here. And that's what, that would have been all of Israel. Verse 20, this is a copy of the letter which the Spartans sent. The rulers of the city of the Spartans to Simon the high Cohen, a priest, and to the elders and the Kohenim, or the priests, and the rest of the Yehudim, our brethren, greeting. The envoys who went were sent to our people have told us about your, your glory and your honor. We rejoice at their coming. Verse 22. And what they had said we have recorded in our public decrees as follows. Numinus, the Ben of Antiochus, and Antaper, Antapter, the, the Ben of Jason, or Jason, envoys of the Yehudim have come to us to renew their friendship. So they sent up messengers that were under guard to renew the friendship with us. It has pleased our people to put a copy of their words in the public archives so that the people of the Spartans may have a record of them. And they have sent a copy of this to Simon the High Cohen, the priest, verse 24. And after this, Simon sent Numinus to Rome with a large gold shield weighing a thousand menas to, to confirm the alliance with the Romans. So he's making an alliance with the nations around him. Verse 25. When the people heard these things, they said, How will we thank Simon and his men, or his sons? Verse 26. For he and his brothers and the house of his father have stood firm. They have fought and repulsed Israel's enemies and established its freedom. So they made a record on bronze table, tablets and put it upon pillars on Mount Zion. Now, you got to keep in mind and remember that just because Yahuwah is keeping His promise and preserving a remnant doesn't mean all these people are following all His ways. They're following them when, it, when it's convenient. Okay? But He made a promise all the way to Abraham that He would preserve these people. And that's what's, being, what's going on. Some of them are righteous and some of them are not. They're individually judged, not as a nation. This is a copy. Is this where I was? 27. 27. Okay. So they made a record on bronze tablets and put it upon pillars on Mount Zion. We all know where Mount Zion is. That's right where, next to Jerusalem. This is a copy of what they wrote on the eighth day of Elul. Okay, so in this very month that we're counting off in right now. And at this point, it doesn't matter, it, it, you know, we're in a lull, whether we're uh, on the new moon, the full, uh, the full moon, the crescent, or the conjunction, we're in the month of a lull. So this was on the eighth day of a lull in the 172nd year since Greece had been unified, which is the third year of Simon, the great high Cohen, a priest, in Azrimel, in the great assembly of the Kohenim, priests and the people and the rulers of the nation and the elders of the country the following was proclaimed to us 29 
since wars often occurred in the country, Simon the Ben of Matthias, a Cohen of the Ben of Yorib, and his brothers exposed them to danger and resisted the enemies of their nation. And in order that their sanctuary and the Torah might be preserved, that's their main influx, and that's another reason why they received protection and strength. And they brought great glory to their nation. Jonathan rallied the nation and became the high Cohen and was gathered to his people, killed. And when their enemies deceived, decided to invade their country and lay hands on their sanctuary, verse 32, then Simon rose up and fought for his nation. He spent great sums of his own money. He armed the men of his nation's forces and paid them wages. He fortified the cities of Yehuda and Bethzur on the borders of Yehuda, with formerly the arms of the enemy had been stored. And he placed their garrison, the gar a garrison of, Ye of the Yehudim. He also fortified Yapa, which is by the sea, and Gazara, which is on the borders of Astros, where the enemy formerly lived. He settled Yehudim there and provided in those cities whatever was necessary for their restoration. Verse 35. The people saw Simon's faithfulness and the glory which he had resolved to win for his nation, and they made him their leader in high coin, because he had done all these things, and because of the justice and loyalty which he had maintained towards his nation. He sought in every way to exalt his people, and in his days things prospered in his hands, so that the nations were put out of the country, as were also the men in the city of David, or which is Jerusalem, David in Jerusalem, who had built themselves a citadel, a fort, from which they used to, to sally forth. Now, sally is a protected area so that they can go through, okay, sally forth. You go to a police station, they'll have a sally port. That's a place where they can unload their prisoners safely, okay, that's what this is talking about. And defile the environs of the sanctuary. In other words, the things that it brought in that defiled the sanctuary and do great damage to its purity. As they did, they offered sacrifice swine and things on there and they cleansed that. He settled Yehudim in it and fortified it for the safety of the country and of the city and built the walls of Jerusalem even higher. Okay, 38. In view of these things, King Demetrius confirmed him in the high priesthood. And he made for the Kohenim, and he made him one of the king's friends, and paid him high honors, for he had heard that the Yehudim was addressed by the Romans as friends and allies and brethren, and that the Romans had received the envoys of Simon with honor. So when he sent out the messengers, they didn't kill him, they treated him with honor. Forty one, and the Yehudim and their Kohenim, or priest, decided that Simon should be their leader and high, and high Cohen or priest forever until a trustworthy prophet should arise, which never did. The first prophet to be in Israel again would be uh, uh, Johann the Immersive or John the Baptist, be the next one that shows up. That's a while down the road here. Okay, 42. And that he should be governor over them and that he should take charge of the sanctuary and appoint men over its tasks and over the country, the weapons and the strongholds, that he should take charge of the sanctuary, verse 43, and that he should be obeyed by all and that all contracts in the country should be written in his name and that he should be clothed in purple and wear gold, like royalty, okay? 44, and none of the people or Kohenim a priest shall be permitted to nullify any of these decisions or to oppose what he says or to convey an assembly in the country without his permission or to be clothed in purple or put on a gold buckle. Verse 45, whoever acts contrary to these decisions or nullifies any of them shall be liable to punishment. 
verse 46. And all the people agreed to grant Simon the right to act in accordance with these decisions. Verse 47. So Simon accepted and agreed to be a high priest, to be commander and ethnarch of the Yehudim and the Kohenim, or the priests, and to be protector of them all. Verse 48. And they gave orders to inscribe these decree, this decree upon bronze tablets to put them up in a conspicuous place in the precincts of the sanctuary and to deposit copies of them in the treasury so that Simon and his men or sons might have them. Chapter 15. Antiochus, the son of Demetrius, the king, sent a letter from the island of the sea to Simon, the Cohen, the priest, and Enthanach of the Yehudim, and to all the nations, verse 2, its contents were as follows. King Antiochus to Simon, the high priest of Kohen, and the Enthanach, and to the nation of the Yehudim, greetings. Whereas certain pestilent men have gained control of the kingdom of our fathers, and I intend to lay claim to the kingdom so that I may restore it as it formerly was, and have recruited a host of mercenary troops, <coughs> and have equipped warships, verse 4, and intend to make a landing in the country so that I may proceed against those who have destroyed our country and those who have devastated many kings in my kingdom. Now therefore, I confirm to you all the tax remissions okay, that the kings before me have granted you and released from all the other payments from which they have released you. I permit you to mint your own coinage as money for your country, and I grant freedom to Jerusalem and the sanctuary or the temple. All the weapons which you have prepared and strongholds which you have built and now hold will remain yours. Every debt you owe to the royal treasury and any such future debts shall be canceled for you from henceforth and for all time. Verse 9, when we gain control of our kingdom, we will bestow great honor upon you and your nation and the temple so that your glory will become, become manifest or made known in all the earth. Here we go in another dating. Verse 10, and in, in the 174th year, Antiochus set out and invaded the land of his fathers. All the troops rallied to him so that there were few with Trypho. Antiochus pursued him, and he came in his flight to Dor, which is by the sea, for, the new, for he knew that troubles had conveyed, converged sorry, upon him, and his troops had deserted him. Verse 13, So Antiochus encamped against Dor, or next to Dor, and with them were 120,000 warriors and 8,000 cavalry, men on horseback or, or, and or elephants. He surrounded the city and the ships joined battle from the sea. He pressed the city hard from land and sea. He permitted no one to leave or enter it. Verse 15, Then Numinus and his companions arrived from Rome with letters to the kings and countries in which the following was written. Lucius, council of Rome of the Romans, to King Ptolemy, greetings. The envoys of the Yehudim have come to us as our friends and allies to renew our ancient friendship and alliance. They had been sent by Simon the high Cohen, or priest, and by the people of the Yehudim, and have brought a gold shield weighing a thousand minus or minus. Verse 19, we therefore have decided to write to the kings and countries that they should not seek their harm or make war against them and their cities and their country or make alliance with those who war against them. And it has seemed good to us, the shield from them. Therefore, if any pestilent men have fled to you from Simon, from their country, and hand them over to Simon, the high coin, that he may punish them according to their Torah, or their law. Verse 22, 
The council wrote the same thing to Demetrius the king and to Adelus and Arathus and Arceus and to all the countries and to the Sapsons, Sapsons, and to the Spartans and to Delios and to My My Minodos and to Sycon and to the and to Saria and to Samos and Pamphylia, there's one we can remember from the New Testament, and to Lycia and to Helcarnicus and to Rhodes, which we know is in Greece, and Phalius and to Kos and to Side and Artis and Gatania or Gortina and Nidias and Cyprus and Cyrene. Verse 24. They also sent a copy of these things to Simon the high priest or Cohen. Verse 25. Antiochus the king besieged door or attacked door again, continually throwing his forces against it and making engines of war. And he shut Trypho up and kept him from going out or in. Verse 26, And Simon sent to Antiochus 2,000 picked men, or chosen men, to fight for him, and silver and gold and very much military equipment. Verse 27, But he refused to receive them, and he broke all the agreements he formerly had made with Simon and became estranged from him. Verse 28, And he sent to him Antonibus, one of his friends, to confer with him, saying, You hold control of Yapa and Gazra and the citadel in Jerusalem. They are cities of my kingdom. So he's trying to claim them, okay, again. You have devastated their territory. You have done great damage in the land, and you have taken possession of many places in my kingdom. Now then, hand over the cities which you have seized and the tribute money of the places which you have conquered outside the borders of Yehuda, or else give me for them 500 talents of silver and for the destruction that you have caused and the tribute money of the cities 500 talents more. Otherwise, we will come and conquer you. Verse 32. And Antinobus, the friend of the king, came to Jerusalem and when he saw the splendor of Simon and the sideboard with its gold and silver plate and his great magnificence, he was amazed. He reported to him the words of the king. Verse 33, But Simon gave him this reply, We have neither taken foreign land nor seized foreign property, but only the, heritage, the inheritance of our fathers, which at one time had been unjustly taken by our enemies. Verse 34, now that we have the opportunity, we are firmly holding the inheritance of our fathers. Not backing down at all. Okay? Verse 35. As for Joppa and Gazara, which you demand, they were causing great damage among the people and to our land. For them we will give a hundred talents. Antipas did not answer him a word, but returned in anger to the king and reported to him these words and the sp splendor of Simon and all that he had seen. And the king was greatly angered. Verse 37. Now Trypho embarked on a ship and escaped to Othrus, Othusa. Verse 38. Then the king made Syndabus commander-in-chief of the coastal country and gave him troops of infantry and cavalry, in other words, foot soldiers and Calvary, one's on horseback. Verse 39, he commanded him to encamp or camp against or next to Yehuda. <coughs> Excuse me. And commanded him to build up to Kidron and fortify its gates and to make war on the people. But the king pursued Trypho. So Cenobus came to Yamina and began to provoke the people and invade Yehuda and take the people captive and kill them. Verse 41, he built up Kedron and stationed their horsemen and troops so that they might go out and make raids along the highways of Yehuda as the king had ordered. We got one more chapter and it's a short one. We're going to finish it.
Okay? 16. Jan went up from Gaza and reported to Simon his father what Cenobus had done. And Simon called in his two older sons, or Ben, Yehudas and Johan, which obviously named after his brothers, and the house of my father have fought the wars of Israel from our youth until this day. And things have prospered in our hands, so that we have delivered Israel many times. But now I have grown old, and you, by his mercy, are mature in years. Take my place and my brothers, and go out and fight for our nation. And may the help which comes from the Shamiim or from the heavens be with you. Verse 4, So Johan chose out of the country 20,000 warriors and horsemen, and they marched against Cenobus and camped for the night in Moedin. Moedin. Verse 5, Early in the morning they got up and marched into the plain, okay, the battleground, the plain, and behold, a large force of infantry and horsemen, or cavalry, was coming to meet them, and a stream lay between them. Verse 6, Then he and his army lined up against them, and he saw that the soldiers were afraid to cross the stream, so he crossed over first. And when his men saw him, they crossed over after him. Verse 7, Then he divided the army and placed the horse, the horsemen in the midst of the infantry. For the cavalry of the enemy were very numerous, and they surrounded the army, were put to fight. And many of them were wounded and fell, and the rest fled in the stronghold. At that time, Yehudas, or Yehuda, the brother of Johan, was wounded. But Johan pursued them into Cenobus, reached Kedron, which he had built. Verse 10, they also fled into the towers that were in the fields of Astros. And Johan burned it with fire. And about 2,000 of them fell, and he returned to Yehuda safely. Verse 11. Now, Ptolemy, the son of Ababus, had been appointed governor over the plain of Jericho, because that was a flat area around Jericho. And he had much silver and gold, for he was son-in-law of the high Kohen, or high priest. Verse 13. His heart was lifted up, so he was married to Simon's daughter. Okay. His heart was lifted up. He determined to get control of the country and made treacherous plains again. Well, actually, it was the other side. I misspoke. Okay. He had treacherous plans against Simon and his sons. So their high priest over their uh, Elohim that weren't real Elohim, and it's been to do away with them. Verse 14. Now Simon was visiting the city of the country and attended to their needs. And he went down to Jericho and with Matthias and Yehudas, his men, or sons, in the 177th year. So it's keeping track of all this, how long this has been. In the 11th month, which is in the month of Shebat, verse 15, the son of Ababus received them treacherously in the little stronghold called Dok, which he had built he gave them a great banquet and hid men there. Verse 16, when Simon and his sons, or Ben, were drunk, Ptolemy and his men rose up, took their weapons, and rushed in against Simon in the banquet hall, and they killed him and his two sons and some of his servants. Verse 17, so he committed an act of great treachery and returned evil for good. Now we know what the cursed is the man that returns evil for good. Okay, verse 18. Then Ptolemy wrote a report about these things and sent it to the king, asking him to send troops to aid him and to turn over to him the cities and the country. He sent, he sent other men to Gazra to do away with Johan. He sent letters to the captains asking them to come to him so that he might give them silver and gold and gifts. And he sent other men to take possession of Jerusalem and the temple hill, but some of, of someone ran ahead and reported to Johan at Gazra that his father and brothers had perished. 
and that he has sent men to kill you also. When he heard this, he was greatly shocked and seized the men who came to destroy him and killed them, for he had found out that they were seeking to destroy him. Verse 23, the rest of the acts of Johann and his wars and, and, and the brave deeds which he did and he built and the building of the walls which he built and his achievements. Verse 24, behold, they are written in the chronicles of the high Cohen, Cohenum from the time that he became high Cohen after his father. So we're going to pick it up next week in the second book of Maccabees. So... We are going to, we've completed uh, the uh, expository teaching of the first Maccabus. And today we went 12 through 16. Just need to refresh my memory on that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, we ask you to do so. It costs you nothing. It's anonymous. Okay, and if you, and if, if you subscribe and you really like this video or any of our other videos, give them a thumbs up on YouTube. Okay, because that helps our algorithms so that more people will see our videos. And then if you really like it, share it to your Facebook page and then make sure to hit that notification bell on the way out. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.